Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're a new watcher to the channel, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning illegally, warm welcome to you. And uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the analysis that I provide every week uh, useful to your trading. And so... Let's get into the week ahead and um, looking at trading economics. <clears throat> 5th of June, week starting, and this is after the debt saga. It will be a relatively quiet week in the, in the United States with only the ISM services, PMI, which actually, um, you know, uh, quite important. Uh, factory orders and trade data of significant importance. Elsewhere, investors will be closely following monetary policy meetings in Australia, Canada, um, and additionally, May inflation rates are set to be released in China um, and Switzerland. This is the other uh, I guess country that we would uh, watch. And so other important releases include uh, first quarter GDP growth rates for Australia, as well as services PMI for, uh, it says China there, Spain and Italy. Um, I guess that always, um, uh, Spain and Italy will make up obviously the Eurozone, um, but Spain and Italy aren't really um, uh, that important when it comes to Eurozone. Um, uh, data is more, you know, France and Germany that kind of make up the bulk of um, uh, the uh, what, what traders are focused on. Finally, foreign trade data is anticipated in Australia, Canada, uh, China, Germany, and France. While labour data will be released in Canada and retail sales figures in the euro area. So um, that's what's coming up in the week ahead. And let's look at some technicals and what happened um, last week so that. Uh, we can make some better decisions um, as to what may come in the future. So looking at the dollar index, which is just a measure of dollar strength. And uh, last week I was um, uh, took a bit of a break. Uh, it was bank holiday weekend in the UK. I think it was also Memorial Day uh, in the US. So I didn't uh, do a video. But over the past couple of weeks, we've seen the dollar actually make this, um, this rally. And there's fundamental reasons as to why. So... Um, what it was really, actually, before I get into that, um, let's get into uh, the recent news, I guess, which is US labor market sends uh, mixed signals giving Fed reason to pause. And so, um, non farm payrolls pretty much came out, um, way above, um, expected. And I was saying this to the guys in the uh, private mentoring group is that I've noticed that uh, over the past couple of months is that uh, the forecasts have been way off, the bank forecasts have been really way off because I think the consensus was for um, the reading to be somewhere around the 180s, 190s, and it came out as uh, over, you know, 300, 339. So um, non farm payrolls increased. But we did have. Um, uh, some counter news to that. So that was the headline figure, but the counter to that was that unemployment actually went higher to 3.7 and um, wage, average wage, wages went uh, were about 0.3% in line with their expectations. So it was a, a very mixed uh, uh, report, but what does the data mean? Because ultimately we need to interpret the data as to what the Federal Reserve are likely to do with interest rates, because ultimately, um, interest rates have a massive influence on um, on the value of a currency, right? And so um, the, the the market is is um, thinking that the uh, Fed, Federal Reserve will pause and likely to pause rates. And so um, let me just scroll down a little bit, uh, and it says here: it says the markets reacted to the pay, the advance in payrolls with Treasury yields jumping off the report. Traders up their bets of Fed hiking rates by the end of July. So the bets on a June hike also rose, though investors still lean towards an expected pause. And for the Fed, however, policymakers will also be looking at the surge in unemployment rate, uh, which was the biggest one-month increase since April 2020. 
there were 440,000 more people out of work each, uh, out of a job in May, also the largest monthly rise since uh, the onset of the pandemic. And so um, it says uh, the mixed nature of the report may validate Chair Jerome Powell's approach to pausing interest rates uh, to assess the impact of uh, five percent point uh, hiking in uh, five percentage points of hiking so far because when central banks um, hike rates um, there's a basically a lag in the effect and what they see um, and how the rates actually uh, affect the economy and business and borrowing and lending right so the 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 really the thing is that they're going to skip in June and potentially hike in July. And that is really reflected as well in the um, FedWatch tool, right? So um, we have the probabilities of no change still at 74%. And the last time this was updated was uh, the 4th of June, which is the day that I'm recording this. So no change so far. Um, 74 percent probability whereas our hike is uh 25 percent so you really want to go with the uh the highest probability um you can be contrarian but you have to really have a reason why you want to be contrarian um uh but it looks like at the moment with all the data that's um that's come in that we are likely the fed are likely to uh pause rates now um go down to uh here then if you can see that i'll zoom in a little bit zoom in um the reason why the dollar was rallying yeah the reason why the dollar was rallying uh, over the past couple of weeks is because in fact the market was expecting um there to be a 25 basis point hike you can see a week ago yeah 26th of may in fact the expectation and the probability of a rate hike yeah this is rate cut and this is rate hike 25 basis points was actually 64 percent so the market was pricing in the um the value of the dollar with a hike yeah coming in june um then we had a bit of interesting information come out on wednesday so the fed signal for rate pause takes pressure off hot jobs report and so on wednesday um there was a, uh, a speech and the Federal Reserve officials are signaling they plan to keep interest rates steady in June while taking, sorry, while, while retaining the option of further hikes in the coming months, steering market expectations ahead of a key employment report. So it was, it was Governor Philip Jefferson, the centrist, who nominated to be vice chair, who often echoes uh, Chair Jerome Powell's views, said Wednesday that skipping an increase would give policymakers time to assess the data, but not preclude future tightening and so when he came out and said that uh, the market basically took notice and said okay well rather than them hiking pretty much they're going to pause and so you saw the probability of a hike reduce yeah and so you saw the um from a week ago you saw the uh, probability of a pause uh increase right to um to where we are now and that is reflected in the market right it's reflected in price in terms of you know the dollar coming down and so i do think ultimately technically that um the dollar is a bit of a tricky one because i think that the dollar can go higher right can go higher with because the expected um hikes may come in july rather than june so this is what is known as a fed skip in uh in interest rates and if we go to july in fact uh july we can see that there's actually a 53 percent chance of a 25 basis point um hike in july so uh from that perspective i can see why the market the data supports the narrative in terms of um you know inflation still is sticky or going higher then um this the probabilities of a rate hike in july are going to increase and therefore you will start to see um uh, the dollar actually still continue to go higher, but I don't think it's going to go too much higher in terms of, uh, you know, a supply zone here, the, the highs of really the year, if it's going to reach these. But again, it's really going to be data dependent. So I can see why you want to get short in the short term, right, with the market pricing out 
um, uh, rate, uh, rate hikes in June, but we could also be supported by, in fact, um, rate hikes in July being priced in. So I can see something like this happening over the, you know, the short to medium term in terms of getting, you know, make an argument for getting long and getting short on the dollar. But again, it's data dependent. And so um, these are the areas that I'd probably look for, you know, shorting at the moment, the current levels or at the absolute highs to short the dollar. But I can understand why if prices do pull back to these 103s, 102.50s, why you would probably may want to get long in anticipation of a July rate hike. So moving on to the, uh, the dollar yen, again, uh, with the Fed expected to hold rates and skip and the Bank of Japan holding rates, possible yield curve control adjustment in June, July. It looks like the end of July now that may be coming. Um, I think uh, we could start to get, in fact, a move to the absolute highs here and then move to the downside as we approach um, the Bank of Japan starting to uh, potentially implement yield curve control, which is a measure of, um, which, which would basically appreciate uh, the currency. And so that's a more, probably more, more over the next uh, month or two. Uh, but again, in the short term with the dollar looking to continue to high rates, you can see the difference, right, in what's happening with um uh, the uh, the divergence in between central banks and so we're seeing this uh, this type of move happen and um, I think in the short term we probably may start to see prices still continue to go higher. I would be surprised if it starts to go to one four six because there was talk of uh, central bank intervention from the uh, Bank of Japan, but uh, I do think that the one four twos may be the ceiling uh, for now, and that also again it just depends on the data. So we also have the uh, the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss, um, we have, yeah, again, pretty much caught between um, this supply zone and this demand zone, which I do think that prices may likely um, auction or range between. I'm not really interested in trading this pair uh, at the moment. I can see there's reasons why, but both central banks probably looking to high crates. Um, and so I do think that price will likely, again, auction, um, but it depends on really what the Fed is going to do um, um, in July. So we could see some more further upside, meaning that you want to buy on pullbacks, but I think that the upside is probably likely to be capped as the Federal Reserve start to uh, um, uh uh, come to the end of their hiking cycle. Uh, the dollar CAD and dollar CAD, the Canadian dollar was um, was quite interesting because um, uh, the report here says loony poised for rally as traders bet on Bank of Canada rate hikes and there's been better than expected uh, data coming out of the Canadian dollar and so um, that's increased the chances of a rate hike and so um, again when you have um, the, the you know the um, uh, two central banks that are looking to uh, hike or hold, you typically get uh, more of a an auction, right? So an auction is really uh, a range, right? Where prices kind of are contained between a high and a low, and so um, you know, with that being said, I think um, the uh, the Canadian dollar is probably a buy, uh, um, but I do think that not really against the dollar, maybe a, a different currency, a currency that's not really looking to uh, potentially hike rates if the expectation is that they might may hike. Um, I think the consensus for now is that they are holding rates at the next meeting, um, but um, maybe towards uh, July, August, they could start to hike rates, and if they do, uh, continue to well say continue, but they do uh, hike rates again after pausing for so long. You are likely to see the Canadian dollar actually strengthen against the um, the, uh, the 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 US dollar, or at least come down to these uh, these areas here. So um, uh, yeah, an interest, very interesting. Um, uh, uh, paired uh, when when considering the fundamentals, but from a uh, from a trading perspective, um, I think this level has been touched several times. I'm not too 
you know, keen on on any of these levels. Technically, I'd probably have to wait for if I wouldn't want to be a buyer. It'd be really up at these highs here before looking at getting short or down. Maybe something like these lows uh, before getting uh, long. For to get long on the uh, US dollar, uh, New Zealand dollar. Um, my bias would be to short this pair. Reason being is because the of, um, the RBNZ, the New Zealand uh, Central Bank, are uh, actually signaled that they are pausing rates. And so, that being said, you've got one uh, central bank which is looking to, although hold rates um, and skip rates in June, they're looking to potentially hike in July. And if that does start to, you know, increase in probabilities, then I think you're going to see further downside on this pair. As one central bank is continuing to hike and the other is continuing to hold. And so, um, yeah, that's where my bias is. You do have a demand zone around here. If you do want to be a buyer of the um, the New Zealand dollar, but you, in order to get uh, short on this pair from a supply and demand zone perspective, you, you either have to see price do something like this, uh, prices make lower lows and then a pullback into that zone before going um, uh, short, or you may see price do something like this, where let me just delete that one, where you have you know maybe price make a higher highs doesn't quite get up there, but starts to make new low, and then you get a pullback into that supply zone for looking at getting short. So those are really the options. Uh, that you would look towards if you want to get short at the moment on this pair. Uh, pound dollar, pound dollar benefiting from recent uh, uh, dollar uh, change in sentiment in terms of hikes, but we've come up into this supply zone. Um, the pound has been the um, has been a decent buy um, uh, overall because the central bank is looking to hike rates, and so um, but. Hiking rates will have an effect on the economy, right? And so former Bank of England policymaker says UK's most painful period is still ahead. Former Bank of England policymaker says full impact of rate hikes coming and falling real wages set to collide with surprising, uh, with, sorry, rising prices and rates. And it says here, um, the former Bank of England policymaker Michael Saunders said the UK economy is headed for a more painful period after the quickest succession of rate hikes in four decades take hold. So it says it normally, he said it normally takes about a year for peaks, for the peak effects from changes in interest rates. Uh, Saunders said in Bloomberg's UK Politics podcast, we haven't yet felt much of the effects of the big rises in rates. That pain will come through and it will come through in the next few quarters. And that's really, the reason why the Fed are looking to pause, and that's why um, going back to um, Fed, uh, was it Williams? Uh, sorry, Philip Jefferson was saying the same thing, right? Because they want to see whether the, um, the, the effect of rates on the economy for hiking again. And so um, the same warning really um, is, is coming for uh, uh, the Bank of uh, uh, the UK, right, where he's saying that the uh, effect of rates on businesses and the economy has yet to be felt. So if they keep hiking now, it may actually hurt the economy more uh, in the future. So, um, you know, that's obviously his opinion um, in terms of whether they should, you know, hold or hike now. But um, the, the UK, uh, the Bank of England are still hiking or expected to still hike is, is what the market expectation is. And so um, with that being said, I still think a pullback into any kind of demand zones, I think are buying opportunities, especially if the Fed uh, come to the end of their hiking cycle sooner than the uh, British pound. But um, if any news comes out where the British pound, they, um, the Bank of England pretty much say they're not looking to hike rates or they're looking to pause, then you could see prices start to pull back as well um, and go to the downside um so yeah these are the areas that i think i'll be more interested in shorting the pound uh, at these highs um and buying the pound probably at these one two threes and even better if it was just below that 
maybe at the one two two fifties, one two two areas. But I think if you buy here, I think that's a decent area to look for any kind of buy trades as well. Um, euro, euro dollar. So euro is pulled right back. We've had this um, absorption from this high to this low, and um, the euro at the moment. Right, the euro at the moment. Um, the ECB are still looking to hike rates, right? So euro core inflation eases, but uh, won't stop ECB hiking. So underlying consumer prices grew 5.3% uh, from a year ago, and it was estimated at 5.5%. But Christine Lagarde said we still have a lot of ground to cover on rates. And so they're still hawkish, even though inflation is coming down uh, slowly, um, or core inflation, which is one of the measures that they uh, they look at um, and they focus on. And so um, with the, uh, the euro, I think, still being hawkish, um, I think any pullbacks at the moment are buying opportunities, especially as the, uh, the Federal Reserve are looking to um, basically hold in June. So we could see a flaw when it comes to this move to the downside. And again, this move is more driven by uh, the, uh, an increase in the Fed looking to high rates, uh, the probability uh, in June until it paused. And you've noticed that since, um, you know, that turnaround in on Wednesday and the Fed signaling that they're likely to pause, and we've seen, um, you know, a floor around this uh, 106.50 area or 106.30s. It doesn't mean the price can't go any lower. I think if it does, I think any, um, there'll be a buy, buying opportunities as long as the uh, the um, the ECB continue to um, uh, remain hawkish. And so, um, if you do want to find out a bit more about uh, really the details, because in my YouTube videos, I kind of do a bit of more surface level analysis. I know a lot of people have been asking. Um, the Trading 180 Mentoring Group is going to be open on the 19th of June, which is uh, 15 days from uh, this recording. So not only do you get access to the uh, mentoring group and we have uh, the discussion room as well as many channels uh, within the uh, within the Discord group to help you and aid you, not only with your technicals, but with your fundamentals and, uh, and psychology. Um, <clears throat> I have hundreds and hundreds of videos, uh, past videos, um, uh, that are, are really kind of men, uh, member-only videos. Um, and you can go back and watch all of the mentoring videos and trade setups and uh, fundamental analysis and uh, group calls, live group calls that we have on a uh, on a Wednesday, and also as well get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, <coughs> which I uh, show my bias on, and um, we back that up with um, bank analysis as well from the likes of Citibank. Um, as well as ANZ and many other banks. And so it's not just necessarily us um, coming to a conclusion about um, where we think prices are going. We back that up with the smart money, which is the banks, and look at their forecasts um, to really uh, gain an edge in the market. And so if you do want to join, uh, enrollment starts on the 19th of June. Now, back to the uh, the charts, looking at the Australian dollar. <clears throat> and the Australian dollar uh, recently has bounced off of this uh, demand zone um, for, for a couple of reasons. One being that, obviously, a change in, um, in the expectation of the dollar um, and whether the Fed are going to hike rates, but also um, the fact that the Australian dollar had um, the CPI come out, which was better than expected, which forces, or I say forces, but it um, will convince, I guess, the, the, the central bank that they could potentially start to hike again, um, as they did do a kind of like a hawkish pause and they did a surprise hike. And um, 
Um, so they really want to try to get inflation down. And if inflation keeps going higher, it means that they're going to have to continue to hike. So Australia's relentless price pressures boost rate hike bets. The monthly inflation rose 6.8% versus forecast for 6.4% increase. So it was above the, the forecast. And it says Australia's inflation accelerated faster than expected in April, driven by higher fuel and housing prices snapping three months of cooling and boosting the chance of another interest rate increase next week so when we see that reflected on the price chart you can see uh what's happening right the increases in or the chance of a probability in a hike are being um priced into the market so i think any pullbacks you could look for actually a long trade as long as the fed are still expected to hold in the short term so that could be a decent buy if you want to get long on the um on the australian dollar um of course there is an opportunity to short as well um but um in the face of an expected hike i'm not too sure whether i'd want to go um uh, short on the um on this pair not really a pair that i'm interested in trading at the moment plus as well china um needs to have really some supportive data which is what i'm waiting for in order for me to really get long on the australian dollar especially against something like the uh, the us dollar um, and finally, gold and gold um, has been supported again um, at this level. Must have uh, uh, plotted this a couple of weeks ago. So we yeah, had the nineteen forties uh, where it did actually react to, and um, we've seen prices obviously pull back a little bit. With gold, there was a report from Pimco saying that um, gold is overvalued but uh, has long term appeal. It says central banks will struggle to cut rates says Greg uh, share now and bullion down in May following rally that started in November. And so really the, the rally was again more to do with uh, dollar strength. And I say the rally, but the, the rally kind of to the downside for gold and the rally to the upside uh, over the past month or so um, for the dollar was really uh, driven by the expectation that the Fed will um, uh, look into high rates. But um, here's a quote, it says, the biggest challenge one has right now is to figure out the lagged effects of any credit tightening that is coming from some of the central banks. That uh, said, share now, the uncertainty band still remains fairly wide and mild recession in developed markets are more, more than likely. But while the Fed may be nearing the end of its tightening cycle, that doesn't preclude another hike. The PIMCO executive said um, central banks could struggle to bring down rates if um, in the face of deglobalization and so-called greenflation as the world shifts from fossil fuels to renewable energy. Still, the long-term outlook for gold, which share now calls a 25-year duration asset, looks brighter as central banks look to diversify holdings away from dollar assets. Uh, there already has been a tremendous amount of interest from central banks that have helped support bullion in recent, at recent levels. He said, so the safety and security of gold right now has a, um, has a high currency to them. He said there's a lot of countries that are questioning their dollar reserves. And so, um, you know, in the short term, we can see gold, you know, pulling back, obviously. But I think, obviously, in the long term, for me, medium to long term, any pullbacks on gold, especially as the dollar starts to come uh, devalue. And if it is going to go into a recession, then um, these prices are looking um, actually quite cheap for gold. And I would expect gold to go higher during a US recession if they do go into a recession, of course. Um, nothing is guaranteed. And so uh, that's where we are in terms of uh, buying. If you do want to get short on gold, um, then in fact, let me just bring this down a bit. The last, I'll draw it from probably around here. In fact, that's where we are. So, if you do want to get long on gold, any pullbacks into even into this uh 119s around here is decent. So, you go down into like a lower time frame and look for any kind of buy trades around here. But again, that's providing you want to get um long on gold and short on the dollar. If not, then I think. Um, any prices down to the 1900s, 1890s are going to be really nice. And I think a bargain, as if you look at the absolute high and the absolute low, um, we are at fair value. 
50% of that is fair value, um, or be high in the loads. So I think a pullback into these zones are going to be definitely nice discounts and bargain prices as we come towards this uh, this low here if prices do come down. So um, yeah, that's where we are. Uh, there is a supply zone right here. Supply. So intraday wise see why prices did bounce off of there but um i think as again the dollar starts to uh weaken going into the second half of the year or expected to weaken into the second half of the year you could see gold again start to look to be a uh buy anyways that's it for this week uh i hope you will have a great trading week take care and all the best like you said, you know, when I first came to trading 180, you know, right. So when I first came, I was just I was focused on the, uh, the fundamentals. But so it was kind of hard for me, you know, to 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 do the strategies with, you know, uh, with the technicals. You know, that's why, mm -hmm. you know, when if you remember I, when I first came, I was kind of like back testing them. I wasn't yeah. I was actually trading them. You know, yeah. I was just back testing them. But and it came to me, man, when I seen how effective they was you know at catching bargain prices you know and i try to understood the you know the uh the method you know of what you know of, of how you uh trade it you know mm. what i'm saying and, and man it, it's spot on spot yeah. on Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this interview, I have a, uh, a, a trader who has come leaps and bounds with his trading. Um, Spencer um, joined, <laughs> um, joined what, 2000, what, 2021, something like that. Been with me maybe about yeah, a year and a bit. Yeah. 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 And um, Spencer's agreed to share his experience with trading 180, his trading journey, and where he is at now with his trading since being with uh, with me and mentoring and uh, the trading 180 group. So, um, Spencer, uh, how did you get into trading, first of all? Um, yeah, so how did I get into trading, you know? Um... I, I I had always had this little intriguing attitude with, you know, wanting to, you know, uh, you know, be my own boss or, you know, do my own little thing or whatever. So I got into trading because, you know, uh, I was just thinking like, man, how can I make that money work for itself instead of me have to work so hard for the money? You know, I, you know, so and I actually and and I like uh, chat B G uh G G P T yeah. too, you know, because yeah. you know you can look it up, you know. So and it and it came right up trading, you know what I'm saying? Smart. You know, so that's actually how I really got into trading. You know what I'm saying? It, well, okay. it was uh investing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, investing. yeah. Similar stories. I I included myself. Um, you know, so many stories and interviews that I've done with traders, and everyone pretty much says the same thing in terms of look, just taking control of your destiny knowing that a nine to five isn't going to be the way that you're going to achieve um, any kind of, you know, uh, a quality of life. You know what I mean? You're in the rat race, et cetera. So 100%. Um, so how did you find uh, trading 180? Uh, you know, um, I like, I uh, want to say that I like YouTube and, you know, man, you know, just going through those periods, you know, where I was going through YouTube and, you know, and I, uh, I was always into the technical analysis side of trading because I used to trade options probably, oh, you know, uh, uh, back in 2008 and, uh, you know, they have lost a lot of money, but uh, I understood. So I, I was looking up fundamentals one day and trading 180 popped up, you know. Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Well, so what made you think about what, what made you think about fundamentals, though? What was what was the trigger about fundamentals that you thought, you know, that you needed more with 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 uh, with your technicals what was the uh yeah. the moment yeah. yeah so the technicals like they work don't get me wrong you know they work but it was like it was just it wasn't enough you know i was looking at the market and you know when i was i go and i try to read articles and lord knows i wasn't understanding nothing at that time you know before mm -hmm. i had met you i wasn't you know, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what those articles were saying. And, yeah. you know, I, I, yeah. 
what is this? You know, they talking about jobs and, you know, GDP. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's this? You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know anything about that stuff, man. So, you know, man, that that's another thing, Trading 180, you know what I'm saying? You know, when I first looked at that first video, you know, um, man, you know, uh, it was it was about uh, fundamental analysis and all those uh, fundamental indicators that you look at and, you know, and I'm like, okay, this was, that was, that was, that was, that really brightened me up. You know, I said, okay, this, this is where I need to be, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. So how, I guess, specifically has fundamentals since you've been trading it um, and applying it to your, to the technicals, right? How has that, um, I guess, uh, how has the fundamentals really helped with your technicals specifically? Yeah. So, so how fundamentals help me? I would, I would say you trading blind without technicals. I mean, without fundamentals. You know what I'm saying? Now that's what me. I would say, I would say, I wouldn't even open up a chart now and not look at the fundamentals first. First. Yeah. So how? So how? So how? Because uh, coming, I know my experience and. Um, how easy is it to actually, or I guess the shift, because it takes some time for you to get used to going to the fundamentals first and then the technicals, right? And then you go open a chart. Most people, most traders, they go to the chart first, then they look at the, then they look at the, um, if they even look at fundamentals, that transition, you know, of always looking at the chart first to then going to actually, no, I'm going to go to Bloomberg or Reuters or, you know, many of the bank analysis that we look at or whatever you look at um, and read, that transition, was that a quick transition or was it like a, a gradual thing? Did you have like those kind of habits where you would look yeah. at the technicals first and, you know what I mean? Yeah, How long take? yeah. So, you know, um well, I say, man, you know, traders, you know, we come out, you know, especially Forex, you know, we look at the quick buck, you know, trying to make the quick buck. So the technicals is kind of like a little false, little quick buck syndrome, right? You thinking like, man, you know, I'm going in, you know, I'm looking at the quick dollar and I, you know, so, you know, uh, I would say, you know, I it kind of gradually changed, you know, because I've got out that quick buck thinking because, you know, now I'm losing quick bucks, you know, how you, how you, your risk, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, the, you know, the higher your reward is, you know, the greater your risk. So yeah. I got started, you know, I'm like, man, you know, and I gradually changed to the fundamentals, to, you know, and like I say, you know, I wasn't a fundamental guy until I really came, you know, to trading 180, you know, and, you know, and you, you kind of made those news reports. I mean, you know, the articles, you made them sound so clear to me, man, to the, you know, now where, you know, like I say, I, I wouldn't, now I look at the fundamentals first, you know, before I even pop on the chart, I look at what's going on with the economy, you know, what's going on, you know, and, and you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't surprise nobody to not look at the fundamentals, you know, first. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I guess as well, fundamentals can be very daunting. Yeah. So you said that, um, you know, you didn't, you, you know, you, you might have been reading some articles and you didn't have a clue, you know, what you were reading, you know, the, the, the relationship between jobs and maybe inflation and the economy and how everything yeah. works. Because, um, you know, fundamentals can be very, uh, I guess, um, co um, complex and confusing. Right. And so um, now that you can, now that you understand the relationship and what to kind of focus on, it makes it really, it makes reading those articles on Bloomberg a lot easier, right? And then now, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Now you can actually understand what the big money are actually saying. Right, right. You know, and why right. they're forecasting what they're forecasting rather than just, you know, taking lead from someone, some random person, an analyst online, Right. You know what I mean? And saying, OK, that person says, buy, I'm going to buy. In fact, you can make up your own mind because you right. know the fundamentals. Right. Right. And then, like I say, man, you know, just, you know, man, trading 180, man. You know, I say, man, it's a great community. You know, everything is, you know, and you we got a good culture, you know. Thank and, you. And, you know, like I say, and then from, from when I first came there, you know, and everything, like I say, you kind of simplified it you know with the gdp interest rates and, and inflation and jobs yeah so 
yeah, the way the way I learned from you, you know, we, we uh, kind of, you know, simplified it, you know, and, and made it easier to understand, you know, if that makes sense, you know, where, yeah. you know, I was able to just, you know, look at look at these and understand them and, you know, uh, you know, and if I had questions, you know, you would answer them for me, you know. And uh, that, that totally made me understand. So, you know, right. it's like, right, start to put together, like, right, the, the relationships between inflation and, you know, jobs and, you know, GDP and, you know, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, and you just, and you see it play out in the price, in the markets over time, right? You've seen that, right. you know, you've seen it do right, that. Yeah, right, yeah, I mean, you know, seeing them, you know, uh, you know, uh, just say supply and demand zones, you know, uh, we wait, we understand what's going on with the country, you know, and understanding what's going on with the fundamentals now. So now we're just waiting on the best price, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so what are some of your, um, you know, uh, light bulb moments? Cause we all have these light bulb moments and I had many when I was learning, you know, where you just like, Oh my gosh, like your mind just blows and you know what I mean you get another one and sometimes you get maybe 10 or 20 but maybe some of the light bulb moments where it, you know certain things just clicked yeah or started so, my, so a light bulb moment was for me was when um when I first learned about basically like you know <laughs> currencies is currencies you know what I'm right. saying you know and it and might seem so simple but what is a currency, you know, I, you know, and there was a light bulb moment, like, you know, this is just a means for exchange, you know, where we, you know, countries exchanging currencies for, you know, this currency and that currency. So, you know, we get blinded by, you know, what currencies is, you know, and we, and, and that's what Forex is. It's just, you know, so I found out that how interest rate differentials, you know, uh, can, and, and capital flows and, and, you know, it's basically the uh, it's the basis of currency. You know, and you know, when I, when I found that out, that was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think traders miss that simple fact, like, man, what yeah. is currency? So you know, what I mean, like, it means exchange, like, you know, store value. You know, like, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a very interesting, very interesting point you make in terms of um, just that simple fact, right? Because not every asset class is the same. So a lot of technical traders will, they will trade the same strategy on every single asset class. But in fact, you actually have to treat assets differently because they have different fundamentals, right? Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. And so you have to know I mean, yeah, we do have intermarket analysis and everything is related. Bonds are related to Forex. Forex, you know, is related to, you know, stocks, et cetera, in, in, in terms of interest rates and things like that. But typically, you know, it's it's important to keep that in mind. You know, what moves the exchange rate? And what moves an exchange rate, yeah, is not going to be the same as if you're trading stocks. So the fundamentals of stocks is different and indices are different to forex and just remembering that point that in fact this is what actually moves forex market it's not the technicals it's you know what i mean what's going on behind it right 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 you know what i mean that definitely was a light bulb moment man yeah. you know for me, like whoa like okay this is you know that's right and and you kind of explain that like you know what i'm saying and i don't know if you was putting it in that lamest term you know where you know this is currency but you know, you made that clear to me, like, where, you know, like, you know, how to trade it. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah. Um, so what other light bulb moments did you have? Can you think of any any other ones? Um, okay. Um, oh, well, look, I guess figuring out, um, figuring out um, your strategy. You know, right. and how effective it is, man. You know, how you know those supply and demand strategies, and you know when you know and um because right before I got to trading one eighty, you know I'm trading other other strategies and other technicals and you know things like that, and you know um and I got into it and and I was looking at looking at your strategy, doing back testing and 
you know, and I'm, you know, oh man, you know, uh, man, this is the strategy, you know, this, yeah. he's yeah. on to something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I just got knows yeah. his tech, I always tell you, yeah. I think, but he, he got knows those technicals, man, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, you know, I think you sent me a message the other day um, about stop hunts, you know, and you were just saying that, you know, stop hunts is really buying at value, right? It's like the, the most bargain price, the cheap price, the most discount price you can buy at, right? When you when you put it into its proper context, that's what stop hunting is. It doesn't happen right. all the time, but when it is, when it does work, like, for example, with today, I mean, well, yeah, sorry, today with the New Zealand dollar, right? Because you got in on that pound New Zealand trade and mm -hmm. you posted it yesterday and you said your analysis was, you know, you're at, you're anticipating the, uh, just in case the RBNZ actually are a bit hawkish, which they turned out to be, right? Right. Right, but where it was on a price chart looked like a brilliant buy in anticipation of that. You could have been wrong, but if you were right, the risk rewards was man i'm talking about hey man can't hey man yeah let's look at that on the price chart matter of highly effective, highly effective. yeah let's look at that on the price chart so i did a kind of circle this as well so that was this was this was the um the, the trade setup right and you got in up, up at the top yes sir yes sir. yeah i remember you posted that uh that trade and you got in up there and uh you made a little i guess a little a uh, little error in terms of taking taking profit yeah and not, yeah, not yeah. setting your <laughs> not not take not setting any uh take profits yeah i had was working and you know running out the house and I'm, you know running out the office and you know, my girl bugging me. That's why I tell her, don't bug me when I'm trading. <laughs> and, you know, leave me alone. Let yeah. me do this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you know what? You're still up at the end of the day. And it was, it was, it's just proof that, you know what I mean? The, the fundamentals, once you, when you get them aligned and then they go in your favor, you know, the risk rewards are, um, you know, are, 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 are brilliant, right? Right, yes. Because sir. who would think yes, of really buying up here unless you're anticipating a change in the fundamentals? Like nobody, you know, is gonna, you know, um is gonna buy, especially in the face of that price action. Nobody. But you did. You bought the yeah, uh, yeah. The, the New Zealand dollar, right? Some people might say, Oh, you faded that, but to have the confidence to do that, yeah, when this is all you're seeing. Most retail traders are never going to stand in the front in, in front of that, right? Right, right. You and, know and, what that, I mean? and that's kind of like a light bulb moment again, you know, because it, like, like you said, you know, when I first came to trading 180, you know, right? So when I first came, I was just, I was focused on the, uh, the fundamentals, but so it was kind of hard for me, you know, to, to, to do the strategies with, you know, uh, with the technicals, you know, that's why, I, you know, when, if you remember, I, when I first came, I was kind of like back testing them. I wasn't, yeah. I was actually trading them, you know, yeah. I was just back testing them, but, and it came to me, man, when I seen how effective they was, you know, at catching bargain prices, you know, and I trying to understood the, you know, the, uh, the method, you know, of what, you know, of, of how you uh, trade it, you know mm. what I'm saying? And man, it was spot on. Yeah. Oh. yeah and that was a that was a really good trade if only you were taking some profits you know what i mean around here but you're still in that trade right you're still in that trade yeah, you're still holding. yeah, yeah. Still okay cool um so i actually added a position when it came back up and oh really right there yeah I, brilliant I that gap in i kind of added so brilliant. i couldn't post that because that's probably not a you know, I no, I mean it's <laughs> it's it's a bit of a gap CPR, I think. Yeah, so that would be a gap CPR, um, probably somewhere around here. Anyone who was anyone who was uh long trying to get long at this area here on right. a pullback would have been caught, right? They would have been caught in their trades, capture the gap down pain, and then the relief right there. So, yep, that's it. Perfect, perfect yeah. gap CPR. Yeah. Perfect gap CPR. So um a recent fundamental, apart from this, a recent fundamental trade idea that you are really proud of. Like one of those fundamental trade ideas that you just you know you 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 think to yourself, I got it. 
you know what I mean? I, I planned it and it worked out brilliantly. What was uh what was the uh, your most one of your most proudest uh, trade ideas? Um, so we go back to that Euro trade. Um, uh, well, I don't think we was doing the recording then, but uh, Euro Euro dollar. Yeah, remember we had remember um in, the conversation. Like, yeah, yeah, the conversation. Last year, yeah, it was last year when Euro fundamentals was changing. And, do you remember? You know, do you remember roughly when it exactly when it was? Because I got in on this slightly late. <laughs> well, I say slightly late, yeah. but I got it on late later than you did. Matter of fact, because I know you were one of the first to kind of um, to 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 jump on this and and switch your bias to I'm, a I'm, euro. I'm thinking, I'm thinking October. Was it October? It was somewhere around here? Yeah. Yeah, it was somewhere around there. Yeah. Brilliant. So, the lows. Yeah. So you got in at these lows? Yeah, I think it was a uh it could have been a stop hunt down there. Okay. Yeah, it could have been a stop hunt down there somewhere, you know. Right. So so what was it fundamentally? Do you remember that was just you were saying to yourself, you know what? I probably want to be a buyer of the euro or a seller of the dollar. Do you remember? Yeah, so so like as I as you know. Uh, me and Ken like the PMIs, you know, yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. because you know we can, we can, you know, kind of. I guess that's a good gauge of basically it goes into GDP, you know. So Absolutely, I've been figuring that out as I was, you know, as I, you know, when when I did come to trading one eighty and learn about GDP, so I just wanted to understand, like, you know, um, what could go into GDP where you know I can see the fundamentals or the economy is changing and getting better. You know, and the PMIs do a good job at that, you know. And uh, so I was uh, looking at the PMIs and, yeah. you know, um, they started, uh, you know, uh, uh, turning, you know, not, not I wouldn't say positive, but they started getting better, yeah. you know, uh, from contracting, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's what kind of got me on, on board with the Euro. You know, I was looking at the fundamentals and, you know, the jobs kind of was, you know, okay. You know, mm. stable, and you know, uh, they weren't deteriorating, and you know, uh, yeah, and then you know, so the fundamentals was changing, so that changes the rhetoric about uh, the central bank being able to hike the rates or not, and if the and if the economy could support that, you know, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's true, and that's, so that was like a changing moment, and I got in on a, you know, I it had to be a. a it had to be a stop on a trade. I think I got, uh, right. you know, maybe about, uh, I want to say 500 pips. You know? 500 of that. Well yeah. done, man. Yeah. Well yeah. done. I remember as well is that one of the reasons I was, I was short on this around this time as well until um, probably later in the year, maybe around about December, I think, and towards the end of December, maybe coming in January, I thought to myself, something's not right. Well, say not right, but I didn't necessarily um, uh, catch on was one of the things was the weather as well, because remember, I think we were expecting really cold weather and with the cold weather would have uh, basically um, not been great for, uh the euro because of you know maybe you know the um the ukraine war russia was rationing etc and things were may have got worse for the euro economy but because the weather was really good as well yeah, yeah. as that started to change we had a mild winter very mild winter um it didn't affect gdp as much so as you say you know the pmis would would were, were coming in okay the warm weather and then by the time we, you know, we got to maybe, you know, uh, towards the uh, December, you know, into January is when I started saying, ah, you know what? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then, and it's nothing, right? We were talking about this. We were discussing this earlier, right? There's there's times where in fundamentals where we're, we're not going to see eye to eye. It doesn't happen too often, right? But it can happen. It has It happens from time to time where it might just be a timing thing. Right. It might be a timing thing. You might see something. You might share it with the group. I'm saying mm, there's certain things that I maybe want to see first before I jump in. But you're you and Ken or Lawrence or whoever might say, oh, do you know what? I think I want to be a buyer here. And then, you know, 
I will jump on board. You know what I mean? You, you see what I'm saying? I'm following you, right? You know what I mean? Eventually <laughs> it, comes, it comes out, right? But and and vice versa, right? So there's times where I might say I'm I'm you know I'm I'm short on the on the on the end, for example. So they might think, oh well, not really too sure because da, da 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 da. And then eventually, you know, there are times where the timing and the fundamentals just line up and everyone is just a no brainer to go long or go short. But there are times with, with the fundamentals, and this is just being honest to anyone who's listening, where it's not always going to be clear to everybody, right? It doesn't make you see what I'm saying it couldn't, you, you can't, it's not always a buy. It's not always a sell. There's always going to be, even if you go to, you know, you read certain articles there might be one analyst that might say, well, we want to be a buyer of the dollar. And there might be another analyst that might say, we want to be a seller of the dollar, right? Okay. There was a times where it might be just like, you think to yourself, hmm, shall I stay in? Shall I stay out, right? Because having- yeah, I think you showed, a, uh, it was a video where, on a group call back probably this year where you yeah. had a little situation where, you know, this analyst was calling for, you know, to buy and this analyst was calling yeah. for the sell. And I'm, if yeah. I'm, if I'm, not quite too sure, but I think it was the dollar though. Yeah, it was the dollar. And that's and that's okay as well. There's gonna be moments like that, right? Mm -hmm. But there are also gonna be moments where everything is as clear as day, where it's just, you know, the dollar is a screaming sell, or the you know, the yen or the pound is a screaming buy, etc. And so, you know, part of the group is that we all are I'm continuing, even, even though yes, I'm mentoring you guys. I'm still learning, right? I still learn and it's, I'm not so ignorant and uh, closed-minded to not include, for example, now I've got PMIs on the spreadsheet. Have you noticed? Before oh, I yeah, 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 I I've got PMIs, right? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so those types of things, we all, as a group, you know, we lift each other up and that's, and that's what, what we want to do, right? That's what, exactly what we do, you know, in, in the, in the community, you great know, so yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great trade idea. Great trade. Um, and um, yeah, brilliant, man. That Euro dollar. Yeah. That, um, that definitely took uh, a lot of people off guard. And then, you know, we had the pullback we were talking about. I think I got again, long on that Euro, um, towards the end of December. And then it was just a case of, all right, then wait for that pullback, right? The pullback comes. I didn't actually get in on the Euro dollar. I ended up getting on that Euro CAD. Did you get in on that Euro CAD trade? Yeah, 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 the Euro CAD. Yeah, yeah the, Euro, trade, the Euro right? CAD was a, was, a, was a really nice one as well. Um, that was the one where, that was one where, like you said, you know, sometimes, you know, where we be, you know, uh, you know, indecisive, you know, or, you know, not really sure or lining up with each other, but that was one where it was clear, yeah. you know, clear, you know, we, you know, we can't, you know, be wrong on this trade here. Yeah. You know yeah. We got in, we got in around here and then literally rolled it up. I took profit yeah. around here. I think, you know, I think is it you can, I think maybe Daniel ended up getting in around that demand zone there again. And then it just went higher. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, there are there are clear, obvious trades, and that's where you want to make your money, right? That's it. And that's what we're trying to do is on a trade idea, you know, just rinse it, squeeze it as much as we can, you know, out of that trade. Um, brilliant, brilliant, man. And um, and so, last question is, how would you describe the difference between um, learning from videos, let's say, for example, YouTube, TikTok, and actually? Um, you know, being with a mentor, how is the, the, you know, what's the difference between those two when someone is learning? Uh, for me, uh, I was I was telling my girl this that this morning. Uh, I like best of the both worlds, you know, because mm. you know I you know I don't want to nag no one all the time, you know, because mm. I, I I can have a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to be keep on raising my hand. Hey, hey, hey. You know, so now that's what I'm I here like for, though, right? The, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. So I like to look at the videos first, and you know, put them on repeat. How many times can I understand it? But but I love having having you there as a mentor. You know, where I can I can say ask. You know, what I'm saying, and, you know, hey man, Leon, I just don't get this. You know, what I'm yeah. saying, you know, and you know, I'm you know I'm trying to make sense to it because I hate where I don't understand something. You know, and yeah. you know, and and. and and man, you know, I can say that you, that's, you know, that's why I love the mentor that you give, you know, her at Trading 180, because, you know, even if you, you know, probably don't know it, you're going to 
find out how to know it and let and give us the best advice about it. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. You Absolutely. Know? And 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 you and and I like how you do it because you don't back it up with just what you say. You know, it's about what others say that's experienced at this. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I like that about you a lot, you know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I mean, yeah, mentoring and trading, I guess, can be quite lonely and this diff it's difficult to kind of you know, we've all been there where we've been at the screen by ourselves and it's like, what do we do today? And a lot of times watching videos on YouTube and TikTok can be very confusing as well because you've got conflicting strategies, you've got conflicting ideas and some people want to trade the lower time frames and scalp, some people want to trade the higher time frames, and it's very difficult sometimes for a trader to be by themselves just watching videos, right? Whereas with mentoring, and I know for me, um, having mentoring with uh, with Mark Chapman, you know, it, it keeps you, it kept me anyway focused, right? I could, yeah. you know, like you say, I could ask him anything, he would answer, we would have conversations, do you know what I mean? We'd have group calls and we have group calls and when I'm saying, ask me anything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it, it does, it makes a difference, you know, yeah, rather than just... Hand. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Whereas a video, you can only get so much from a video. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right, right. You can't, like you say, you just can't get, you know, so sometimes, you know, the video where it's like, ah, do I understand it? And now that, like you said, now you're going from another video to another video. So, yeah. Yeah, just being able to let's just X that out and, hey, man, what, Leon, what's this? You know yeah. what I mean? You know, I don't understand it, you know. Yeah. You know, and, and so having a mentor is, you know, I would say is 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 terrific, man. You know what I'm saying? Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much for doing this, uh, for doing this interview and um, you know, your review of Trading 180. And uh, I really do appreciate it, Spencer. Really do appreciate it. And I'm yeah. glad you've been getting the results you've been getting. You know, you turned your trading around. I was saying, you know, before this, I remember when you first came in. And you know where you are now is just yeah. different person, man. Different person, yeah. different analysis. You know, you're a valued member of the community. Um, your analysis is is top notch, and um, you know I appreciate you, and I appreciate you know uh, what you bring to the community. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Oh, man, you're getting me blessed. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, give, no, you I'll give you your flowers. I give you your flowers. No, man, for real though, man. You've been a a, a a a great, a great inspiration and a great mentor, man, and a great coach towards my, you know, career, man. And you know, I want to say, man, that you know, uh, man, trading one, trading one eighty is everything to me, man. You know what I'm saying? And I, I mm -hmm. really like it. I really love the community, man. And you know, I just, you know, man, God bless you. Man. Really. Thank you, and you too, and you too. Thank you again. And uh, for anyone who does want to join the Trading 180 community, um, go to the website. If there's an opening, you can join. If not, then there will be one probably in the future at some point. And um, yeah. That got me too. I like that there too, how you do the open enrollment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm what that do for me, it make me, it make you kind of like intrigued to find out what is this about? This guy got the open enrollment where, you know, I'm 30 days out. Oh, I want to yeah. get in now, you know? <laughs> Yeah, but I like, but you know what? I, I used to, but I used to keep it open 24 seven. And I found that it doesn't work because a lot of, because some people come in because they're coming in maybe at different points. I get asked the same questions. And while I don't mind repeating myself, it's a lot of work when you have people coming in every day. If I have it in batches, do you know what I mean? If I have, and then I know, okay, I've got maybe, you know, maybe 10 people, 15, 20 people that, that's joined. So then I know now that I can kind of, you know what I mean? Focus on them and bring them through. And when you think about school, right? No one doesn't join school every single every single day. You don't get new students joining a club. Right, you have semesters, you have terms. And so it's, it's and that's because, you know, the teachers, right? Right, you know, right. it's easy for them to keep everybody on the same page, etc. cetera. So, right, right. Man, you know, it, students are a little better with, you know, the work, right? Gotcha. That's exactly it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so it's, so it's, it's, it's that it makes my work easier. You know what I mean? And, um, 
you know, um, and again, it gives you an opportunity, I guess, you know, if you don't want to join today or, you know, next week you can join next month or the next time I have the opening. But, um, but yeah, for anyone who wants to join, there is an opening, I think at the moment, I think it uh, uh, was the fifth, seventh, it closes. And then from then maybe in June, July, maybe possibly um, I'll have another opening, but, um, but yeah, Spencer, thank you again. Much appreciated. And um, I'll see you in the group call tonight. It's going to be in a, what is it? Uh, in an hour and a half, just a, just okay. over an hour and a half. Yeah. So I'm, are you, are you coming? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Get... yeah. I'm going to, uh, yeah. I'm going to get ready for it now. Uh, probably do a little bit of day training and then, yeah, I'll be in there. Yeah. All right. Sure. Cool. I'll see you later. And um, yeah, to everyone else who's watching the video, thank you for what, for listening and watching this long and staying to the end and take care. I hope you have a blessed uh, training right. week. Take right, come on in, guys. Come on in. Trade 180 <laughs> the best, man. You know. All right. Take care now. Take care, man.